Good morning, students. In this class, I will be discussing the film The Cabinet of Dr. Calicari. I will be discussing the expressionist elements in this particular film. So, this is basically an expressionist cinema in a post war Germany. So, let us start. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari came out in 1920. It was a German silent horror film directed by Robert V. And it was written by Hans Janowitz and Karl Mayer. And it is considered as the quintessential work of German expressionist cinema. The film's design was handled by Hermann Worm, Walter Raymond and Walter Orish. And all these artists were famous for their expressionist artworks. So they recommended a fantastic and graphic style over a naturalistic one. So this is the plot of the film. It is basically the story of an insane hypnotist who uses a somnambulist to commit murder. And at the end we see a twist. So this story takes place in Holston Wall, which is a shadowy village of twisted buildings and spiraling streets. And major narrative is actually around this delusion of a madman. So that actually provides the twist of the story. So here we have the major character Francis. He is a young man. In the first scene itself we see this person recalling in his memory those horrible experiences he and his fiancee Jane recently went through. And then there is this character, main character Dr. Caligari who wants a place in Holston Wall, annual fair for a spectacle and he approaches town clerk for the permission and this town clerk behaves rudely towards him. And later he gets this permission but strangely this town clerk is found dead afterwards. So there starts these series of murders. So it is the annual fair in Holston Wall. This is where the story happens. And this character, Francis, and his friend, Alan, visit this cabinet of Dr. Caligari, which is a spectacle which Dr. Caligari presents before the audience. And in that, he is presenting a somnambulist. It is an exhibit where this mysterious doctor shows the somnambulist who is named Cesare. And... He awakens him for some moments from his death-like sleep. And there, his friend, Francis' friend, Alan, asks Cesar about his future. And Cesar answers that he will die before dawn. And the next morning, strangely, next morning, Alan is found dead. And Francis obviously suspects Cesar for being the murderer. And he starts spying on him and Dr. Caligari. Parallelly, there is this criminal who is trying to kill an elderly woman using this, taking advantage of this fearful situation. And the following night, we see Cesare is going to stab Jane in her bed. But softens when he sees this beautiful woman. And instead of committing another murder, he abducts her. And Jane's father awakens because of the noise and he and some servants follow this fleeing Cesare. So Cesare takes this Jane along with him. But later, Cesare cannot outrun his pursuers and he gently places Jane down on the ground and runs away. And Francis and police investigate the caravan of Dr. Caligari because they are suspicious of the involvement of Dr. Caligari in these series of murders. But this Dr. Caligari succeeds in slipping away. And Francis runs behind him and he sees that this Dr. Caligari disappears into a madhouse, into an asylum. And Francis enters this madhouse where he is sure that he will find the truth behind all these mysterious events. And upon further investigation, Francis is shocked to learn that Caligari is the asylum's director. He goes through his 
diary and he found that he had this, Dr. Caligari had this obsession with the story of an 11th century monk named Caligari who, who used a somnambulist named Cesare to commit murders. And Francis and the colleagues of Dr. Caligari called the police to Caligari's office where they show him Cesare's corpse. And Caligari then attacks one of the staff and later we see that he is subdued, restrained in what is known as straight jacket and becomes an inmate in his own asylum. So we think that the story ends there. No, then comes the twist. Francis is actually revealed as an asylum inmate. Both Jane and Cesare are also patients there. And Jane believes that she is a queen. And we understand that Cesare is not a somnambulist but awake, quiet and not visibly dangerous. And the man Francis refers to Dr. Caligari is the asylum director. And Francis attacks him and is restrained in a straight jacket. And then he is placed in the same cell where Caligari was confined in Francis story. And later, in the end of this film, we see this asylum's director announcing that now he understands Francis' delusion and he is confident that he can cure him. So, here in the story of this film. I hope you have seen the film. If you haven't, please watch the film and come back to this video. So, in this class, I will be discussing the expressionist elements in this cinema. Expressionism, as you see, was pioneered in Germany in the first decades of the 20th century and was originally formed from progressive artists and writers in search of a deeper, more spiritual meaning to life. And these men and women sought a more emotional perception of our world. They wanted to completely steer away from the idea of a materialist society and a place of industrialization. And in post-war Germany, these unconventional filmmakers such as Karl Mayer and writers like Hans Janowitz, they tried to seek a new unconventional and stylized fashion. And the artist of an expressionist piece, they tried to depict subjective emotions in art form rather than objective reality. And there is this use of distortion, exaggeration and fantasy and they are used to convey this emotion. And artists relied heavily on the effects of infrequent angles, color and defining bold lines to create a distorted version of reality. And the location shots they used were non-existent because these filmmakers were trying to find a design which is challenging and which is at the same time stemming away from the relatable world. And along with that, this was in keeping with the fact that Germany was in poverty at that time, resulting in low budget films. So these sets would be entirely man-made with bold angled buildings, often creating the sensation that the world is close to collapsing into itself. And the film is based on the distinctive theme of an outcast individual. In this case, featuring the story of a deranged hypnotist who uses a somnambulist to commit murders. So, it mainly employs the themes of insanity and horror. So, this is what Herman Wong says about this set design. He says, we spend a whole day and part of the night reading through this very curious 
script. We realized that a subject like this needed something out of the ordinary in the way of sets. Raymond, whose painting in those days had expressions tendencies, suggested doing the sets expressionistically. So we immediately set to work roughing up designs in that style. So we have two set designers, Raymond and Warm, and they were interested in challenging the modernism's formal and stylistic elements. And they used expressionism as a means to experiment with perception. They tried to construct a nightmarish world of jagged lines and incongruous patterns. So the film's use of expressionistic elements is a prime example of the genre's power to establish a narrative that creates a disconnect between subjectivity and reality. In scenes throughout this film, we see that the sidewalks lead nowhere. All these walls appear warped creating strange shapes and buildings rise at distorted angles in the background as you see in these pictures. And considering the cultural context in which Calgary was created, it makes sense that German Expressionism was such a widely used device in film, visual art and literature. This sense of anxiety, distrust and uneasiness were at an all-time high in Germany during this World War I period. And these films like Caligari were examples of art imitating life. And talking about the mise scene, as you know, mise scene refers to whatever there in front of a camera. Whatever you put in front of a camera is known as mise-en-scene. It includes set, color, actors, costumes, etc. So here in this film, mise-en-scene in Caligari is used to depict a distorted reality. There is this exaggeration everywhere with bold lines. For example, see the streets and towns of Holston Wall, which is a jarred landscape. So here Robert Wien incorporates a still at the beginning of the film of this German town as you see in this picture. So this image features a typical fairy tale like layout which is in the style of expressionist art. The town is shown to be on a hill. All buildings are slanted and twisted towards this highly placed church at the top of the hill. And this image represents a fantasy landscape. However, it uses this dark tones and shadows in order to signify the unnatural elements within it. So this overall expressionist layout of town conveys a town of alienation which is completely away from civilization. And also, this film uses shadows and streaks of lights, which is painted directly onto the sets. The unnatural building shapes convey an almost grotesque atmosphere and the twisted sculptures communicate that this, this town is close to collapsing into itself. So here we see the use of nightmarish shapes and surreal nature permeating in every scene. We can find it in every single scene. So this grotesque and surreal atmosphere is effective in, in increasing or amplifying the gothic horror element and is an established example of expressionist cinema. And talking about the acting and costume, which is also part of Misson scene, there is a over dramatization in the portrayal of characters which you see in German expressionist cinema and 
the cabinet of Dr. Caligari is no exception. The acting techniques within this film revolved around exaggeration, facial expressions are prolonged and dragged out, and there is no dialogue present, so it is dragged out more and more. And body language was also bold and dramatized. Dr. Caligari himself communicates unnerving attributes through his body language. He is hunched back and his unnatural, strange movements echoes this twisted and diverse nature of the setting. And this costume also distorts this eerie feeling. For example, please observe, closely observe the costume and acting style of Dr. Caligari. And talking about the lighting and camera, chiaroscuro lighting is what you see in this film. It is a form of lighting that depicts sharp contrast between light and shadow. And it is a technique widely used in this particular cinema. And it manipulates this contrasted light and shadow created by light falling unevenly or from a particular direction onto an object or character. The cabinet of Dr. Caligari uses this expressionist technique, chiaroscuro lighting, to stimulate tension and horror. This high contrast form is effective in highlighting certain characteristics. For example, when the light falls unevenly onto the face of this somnambulist, we see his extra blackened eyes, which becomes bold and grotesque. And the audience are made aware that this character possesses an element of the supernatural. There is this particular scene in the film which features Francis going to the police station. And the light that falls on the stairs in the scene was made by paint. This expressionist method of painting lighting onto the set design is effectively used by Wien in this film. The filmmakers who seek a German expressionist aesthetics might choose this as a device which enables them to have control over the lighting. And along with that, we see extreme candid camera angles, which is also known as tilted camera angles or Dutch angles, which is normally used to denote distorted mental states. So this is a candid shot, which distorts our perception. This is an example for chiaroscuro lighting which shows this in this particular scene. We see this sharp contrast of light and shadows. And there is this similarity you see in these two pictures. One, as you know, is the famous painting by Edward Munch, which is titled The Scream and this particular face of Césaire. So, we can also see that even in plot, we can find these expressionist elements. The themes of insanity and distortion of reality is throughout this plot. And as I said earlier, it uses the themes of estranged individuals and horror elements. And basically, it talks about these delusions. We see this use of hypnotism and an employment of psychological elements. So we will look into this German expressionist cinemas as such, which captured a specific historic moment. As you know, all these expressionist films which came out in 1920s was based on the premise that film becomes art only to the extent that film image should differ from reality. This particular interpretation of cinema as art would 
go on to influence some of the most important filmmakers of the 20th century. So, during a tumultuous and difficult period in German history, these talented filmmakers tapped into the popular seat gazed and created powerful works that have stood the test of times. The films of this era are in their own way a revealing look at a society at a particular juncture, at a particular moment in history. And it tried to express the disillusionment, distrust and isolation which was experienced by many people living in Germany at that time. So here I conclude. The cabinet of Dr. Caligari was the pinnacle of expressionist cinema. This film captures the distorted and unorthodox aesthetics of the art movement. And this art movement radically challenged conventional filmmaking at that time and has provided food for thought for the film industry ever since. Today, the enduring influence of this German expressionism can be seen throughout this film medium with critically acclaimed directors such as Ridley Scott and Tim Burton consistently taking influence from these expressionist work. We have comic and horror cinemas of Tim Burton which uses gothic elements and mise-en-scene of German expressionism. And also film Nova of 1940s used these lighting patterns of German expressionism. So here I end my lecture on the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Hope it is clear. Thank you. Have a nice day.